As I mentioned, the frequency spectrum expands with the KAKU system. This wider frequency range is more susceptible to interference at the lower frequencies and has a higher attenuation at the higher frequencies. Therefore, the quality of your cable and connectors and your skill in putting on connectors and routing cable is more important than ever before. The wide frequency range also prohibits you from diplexing the off-air antenna signals on the cable running from the ODU to the IRD. That's because off-air UHF channels are in the same frequency range and will interfere with our satellite signals. The same is true for cable TV signals. Another consideration is that the two LMBs will draw more current than the standard multi-sat LMB alone. This isn't a problem if the cable you're using meets DirecTV and SBCA standards, since those standards call for RG6 with solid copper center conductors. RG6 with copper clad steel center conductors have too much resistance to effectively power the LMBs. RG59 is not acceptable either because it too has a greater voltage drop and is not rated for frequencies above 1000 MHz. Another potential problem could be caused by bending the cable in too tight a radius. Micro bends are not allowed. Never use metal staples under any circumstances. Proper connectors are also crucial in the delivery of these higher frequencies. Let's take a closer look. As I mentioned earlier, the KAKU system will be carrying signals from 250 MHz all the way up to 2150 MHz. Now that means every effort must be made to reduce the loss and to isolate the satellite signals from traditional off-air signals. A sloppy connector not only creates more resistance, but it allows signals from outside to get into the cable. Although it's always been important, now more than ever we need to protect the integrity of the installation. We didn't have much to worry about in the 950 to 1450 spectrum range because there were no off-air channels within that frequency. But since the standard off-air spectrum runs from 55.25 MHz all the way to 805.75 MHz, there are now a lot of signals that can interfere. DirecTV requires all connectors be approved compression type. This is even more important than ever with these higher and lower frequencies. Compression connectors also do a much better job sealing out moisture and if torqued properly will outlast crimp connectors. Plus, they won't have as much of an impact on the impedance. As a result, there's less chance of ingress, signals getting in, and less chance of water damage. The increased frequency spectrum also impacts other passive components, so let's take a look at that next. With almost 2 GHz of signal traveling down the RG6 cable, every device in line can be a potential problem. Devices like ground blocks and wall plates need to be rated to accommodate the highest frequency. Many manufacturers don't test their hardware above 1 GHz. Remember, if it doesn't say it works to at least 2.5 GHz, there's no guarantee that you won't have problems. Other devices aren't tested below 950 MHz. Now that could be a problem since their signal is as low as 250 MHz. Make sure everything you put in line is rated to handle the entire frequency range. Well now that we've looked at the components and installation from the ODU to the receiver, let's take a closer look at the H20 receiver. The H20 and the H10 IRDs are very similar in appearance and operation, but there are big differences in the way the H20 unit receives and processes signals. The tuner range is much wider, allowing the receiver to select input signals to 2150 MHz. Decoding the information is done using MPEG-4, and input selection is determined using code instead of voltage or 22 kHz tone. Connection to the IRD is done like any other HD IRD. The output options to the TV or sound system are the same as the H10, and like all DirecTV systems, a land-based telephone connection is required. After determining the best HDTV video source available, connect the appropriate HDTV receiver output to the TV set input using the cables provided. Like all DirecTV installations, the best source should always be used. This is determined by the input sources available on the TV set. Next, connect the standard definition feed from the receiver to the TV set. With all the cables connected, plug the receiver into an electrical outlet. 
Now that you've connected the hardware, the next step is setting up the remote control. First, install the batteries that came with the system. Programming the remote is done exactly as you program other DirecTV remotes. Now that you have the remote control programmed, we can start setting up the TV and the receiver. I'll show you how to do that in the next section.